Hey guys, I'm out with the Wood Beardsman. Just grabbed some of this hand sawn lumber from my dad's pile and we're heading up to do some crafting at the fort. <laughs> look, if you look through the viewfinder while I do it, you won't, you won't know it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll look through the viewfinder yeah. and get it. <laughs> Danger, expensive camera at play. <laughs> We actually uh, spent the night in the fort last night and it's uh, been freezing rain since about midnight. So those are the conditions we're working under right now. And if you want to see that video, you'll have to go back a week or so in my uh, video list to see that first night overnight in the camp, AKA the fort. We'll get a Fire started before we start working. We have wood coming in. Yeah, some. Most of the dead branches to burn here too. Thanks. Yeah, I think, I think this is a good table spot. We just have to move the uh, firewood. Maybe by burning something. <laughs> Yeah, it's just wet on the outside, I think. Feels heavy. Maybe it's dry. Maybe it was wet. Maybe it wasn't a dead tree. Do you want to move? Do we move everything? We'll just move it all down lower so it can just kind of slide down a bit. This stuff's dry here. Yeah, so is this one. Store it over there for now. I didn't bring any stew, but I brought uh, medicine and wild rice to cook up. got our basic plan in mind so Chris is cutting um, an upright pole to go by the one skinny tree to make it the same width as the bigger tree and I am looking for two medium size dead standing balsams which will make the longest piece um, from end to end I mean two of them to go side by side so Let's just find a couple of those. I don't know that I needed to wear my tool belt out here on this mission. It's more of a hindrance than a help, uh, but I just forgot to take it off. So it's going with me now. You know what else is more of a hindrance than a help? Hey, yeah, you. Uh, 
that's a good one there. Back up, back up from the axe, ding dong. Danger. Back up. There's one. And it only needs to be so long, but then the rest of it can be dry firewood. And this other one's about the same size, approximately. I'll cut this one too. I don't know if I've shared uh, this little trick before, but um, these mechanics gloves are really awesome. These merino wool liners, super awesome. But in combination, big winner, very comfy. Just buy your gloves a little bit bigger than you would normally wear, and you can fit that really nice liner inside of them. And it makes them warm, comfortable, very mobile, and uh, Great for getting some work done. All right, so Chris got that pole cut and it's going over here at that skinny end to make up some bulk so they're approximately the same width. That big tree and the two small trees. Whoa. Where's our fire? I have to take, take you back to the basics here. I need a bellows in there. I think they uh, are right there. <coughs> completely. Here it all is. Right in the middle there.
I'm gonna grab a piece of coal from the fire. What for? Burn a hole through it so you can run a peg through or? Oh, are you gonna mark it and do the oh. other side? No. <clears throat> I have a pencil. <laughs> I was gonna um, tack this end in and then do all that after once these two are kind of up the height we want. Give me a sec. Hold it. And I kind of want to be working at this height, right? Keeping in mind that the snow is going to melt later, so that in the summer we don't want to be working on a table up here. So maybe lower. <clears throat> yeah. Like yeah. I don't know how much snow we got. A bit. We'll just pile. We'll pile mud up. Yeah. Make a raised standing platform. <laughs> That'll be the next part. What the porch? We'll build the porch <laughs> to match the height of the table. <laughs> All right. I'll go this side here. So remember, we got it. We're going to go up two levels. Yeah. Also, so there'll be two inches on top of this. Yeah. So. I mean, that's good now. Yeah. But when we lose the snow, it's going to be too hot, I think. So we'll go down a little bit. Make a pilot hole. Yeah. With my 22. <clears throat> Shoot a pilot hole through. Close enough. At, whoop, at, this end, at this end, they're pretty close. We might have to do some shimming later. We'll see. Maybe don't put it all the way in. Okay. Leave it out of touch. Good. And then <clears throat> I don't know if we have to cut these ends down. I need to get a nail through because they're thinner. Okay. So you just have to hold it level. whole thing's gonna move. I guess. Probably need the longer nails for this part. Good. Snow landed right on my neck. Oh well, it was gonna happen. Cute. <clears throat> cut that off. Hey, right. we're gonna cut that off. Oh, I thought we'd just leave them there. Well, it would hold more support. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Not a big deal. It could be there. It's just a lot of weight on the tree. So what we need to do is we need to figure out how wide those four, four are together four. and then cut these off at that length, right? Make right. three. So we'll lay those down on the ground and then we'll mark this. You can go a little short of, uh, right? You want to go. Twenty-three. You want to go like twenty-one. Yeah, I don't want them to show. No. Twenty-one. Twenty-one. It is. Okay. Twenty-one. We said, eh? Oh, I have an uncut pencil here. That's no good. Here's a cut one. It's, it's pretty dark. <laughs> works. It works. So I gotta try to do this perfect? No, I don't. Perfectly square. Sharp. I don't think you want your face there. 
Come on. Hey, get out. Get out. other end. You be my assistant? Yeah. Memorial 21, it even does cabinetry. It's a fine work. Hey, we're doing four? Might as well. All right. Have wood, we'll cut. Have saw, we'll cut. Have wood, we'll saw. You might as well overbuild it. Should we? For building, you might as well overbuild it. Question is, does this go in the fire? Save it. We'll make something with it later. Fireboard. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Is it cedar? No, it's Pine. balsam. Balsam. Balsam or spruce. Cool. Yeah, so we've got those two cut to fit between the trees and then the two on the outside will just go. Wherever they go? Yeah. Now. Yeah, what we could do is we could measure and, and put a mark at the same distance in on each one. And then we know they'll be even, or we can just eyeball it. Yeah, if you want to measure, go it's ahead. Just a bushcraft table, right? Doesn't Bush, have to be perfect. Doesn't have to be bushcraft. It could be bush crap. <laughs> yeah. You guys made some real good crap. All right, I'm gonna hammer those into place. You already tell it's a little sloped this way. Yeah, that's all right. That's so all the meat juices run off <laughs> down here. Yeah. <laughs> that one I don't think we want it hanging out that end too far because that's our main walkway yeah we're gonna cut that off oh, okay. well maybe we'll go this way instead yeah, we'll yeah make you happier and then we'll cut that enough sure. <laughs> like that yep and then there's a spot for a drink just at the nice. edge here cup holder kind of out of the way yeah Sure, it can't sound that good hammering on top and the dog's ears are right underneath. The dog doesn't care about anything. Yeah. No brain, no pain. So. My mom's gonna watch this video and she's gonna be wondering why we never have anything nice to say about the dog. <laughs> she didn't watch the last one. <laughs> Have a look here. 
Now we have a spot to cut up our venison steaks to make something to eat. Keep our firewood dry too. Bonus. This nice table, all set up. Got the fort in the background, the fire here. We got the fishy thing hanging over the Purcell trench. You said it's called. Yep, Purcell trench grill. Purcell trench grill, and the cast iron is heating up. We are going to make some wild rice. Oh yeah, sure. Okay, so then do we you want this want heated yet? No, because okay. the wild rice is going to take a while. A long time. Yeah. Um, Water. So. Here. Let's uh how much wild rice do you want to eat? No. Uh well we can always bring it back if we don't finish it here. Whew. Yeah, you already burnt a hole in our table. Character mark. Yeah. Maybe we'll put that down here then. Yeah. So what you got in there? Wild rice. Wild rice. Okay, good. We're gonna season it? No. Nothing. No, we'll, we'll throw some butter on it later. Did we bring butter? Good question. I'll have to check. Okay, I, oh. didn't, I didn't bring any fats. What about the bear fat? It had the bear fat. No, it ended up back at, uh, back at my house. I don't know. Yeah, never made it out Well, here. let me go dig through my bag and see what we got. See what we got. Okay. That's gonna take a good 45 minutes, hour. Yeah. Right? And then what else you got over here? What's this? Um, those are the venison loin. Venison loin chops. Well, if we open this, are you gonna grab it there? Probably. We'll just have a little peek for the camera and then we'll peek. No, we forgot to make the table at the height that she can't rest her nose on it. And just like, <laughs> hey, what are you guys doing? <clears throat> so where did, this, where did this come from? Well, it's labeled uh, RKV, so that means road killed venison. Oh, you didn't even bring the one that you you uh, shot this year. Brutal. That one I <laughs> I didn't find that uh, the loin part. Oh. Actually, with that one, the loin I think I did a lot of the loin as loin roasts with the ribs still on, and the and the spine in. Well, I feel like a second class citizen now. I didn't even get the fresh stuff from this year. Sorry. Are you gonna call this? This is fresh. Tenderized. This is from not too long ago. Fresh rib kill. Yeah. I guess it's your style. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got no complaints about rib killed venison. Well, should we season it right now? Yeah, we can put some seasoning on it. Sure. Wadobo. Wadobo. Whoa. So that you can get on the woodedbeardsman.com. You can also get the boreal saw, which we used today. Yeah. And we're going to be adding more stuff. Maybe we'll get the the Groman stuff on there too. That'd be cool. Yeah, so we have some knives to get, sell. Get it stamped. Trot and bird. Yeah, that'd be cool. Can they do that? You think? Yeah, you custom one. You could probably you could logo this. You could uh, etch it on the metal or on the leather. That would be neat. That's easily done. You guys have to let me know if you want to buy one of those. Then you could carry Chris around in your pocket all the time. Yeah, because I'm an inspiration to lots of people around the world. Yep. I don't think I am, but some people have said that. I'm yeah. sure you are too. Yeah. Yep, they like People our say it. they like our collaborations together. Yep, me make, too. I'm gonna make a chopstick. I like them. Yeah, it's fun, right? We're uh, learning and doing new things. Yeah, this whole bushcraft thing. Yeah, it's a whole new experience. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, we uh, <laughs> from nothing. We were like the pigs that made their house out of straw before. And now we've got a house out of sticks. <laughs> and then uh, if you follow along long enough, we're going to build something out of brick and mortar. And I made some chopsticks. Nice. And some Zach Fowler just inspiration. Like that. Just, just I don't know. Just I, boom. Dude, it's like it's in my blood now. <laughs> Bushcraft. Totally. You know what I, I, like, I didn't even think of this. I didn't. I, it just happened. I already caught this, <laughs> this dirty beast here 
was chewing our handmade spatula. Uh, yeah. Okay, so we'll cover this up and maybe we'll set a booby trap on top of it or something. Yeah, so yeah. she grabs it. We'll Electric fire, electrified mouse traps. She already actually incidentally <clears throat> took my Groman knife for a run. Yes. Chewed and broke it. You yeah. broke the sheath. You silly goose. So maybe yeah. we'll, uh, if we do this, that'll be an alarm. Yeah. So if you pull if we that off, we're gonna hear you. All right, let's let some rice rest and we can rest too. We can take a little break. Nap time. Yeah, totally. Head off to the shelter and have a nap. Is that enough water though? Uh, we're having at least four cups in there. We're having a debate. It's a liter anyway. Pretty sure this one's hot chocolate mix. Probably this one is too, but then I've never seen um, butterscotch chips in a hot chocolate mix. So we don't know if we're making cookie dough or hot chocolate, but we're gonna give it a try. All right. Chris is finishing up his mystery drink. I slurp back mine. Uh, burnt the rice a little bit, added some more water. And now we're going to cut up these little venison loins into venison medallions. Loin medallions. So much easier to do when you've got a dog's nose right in your business here too. Hey, what are you doing here? Oh, I know. You just want me to grab your face and give you a whole bunch of nose punches. Right? Just not even a flinch. Not even a flinch. It's like, go ahead. Punch me in the nose. I don't get it. Anyway, back to the main show. Okay. I don't know why I left the. Uh, I was gonna say the silver skin on there. Usually I'm good at taking that off. <clears throat> Just so that you could have one extra thing to do today. Yeah. And like Jeremy out in the sleet. Doing bushcraft <laughs> will surely appreciate taking silver skin off. Yeah. Just to appreciate the wild gaminess of it all. Yeah. Well, that's how you know it's authentic, and we didn't just go and get some. What would we go and get to replace venison back straps? Goat. Goat meat. I don't know if I've ever seen goat for sale in North Bay. It's just not a thing around here. No. Uh, maybe in some of the farmers markets you might be able to get it or like direct from some farms, but you don't just get it at the grocery store. Goat meat's not the greatest anyway. I like it. I've had really good goat meat. It's because Cassie Gomeso, which is a uh, Nepali uh, goat curry. I think it's because you can't smell. Maybe. Because goat smells. Goaty? It's more a smell than maybe a taste. Because yeah. the meat's fine, but it tastes like goat. Yeah. You can get over the smell of goat. I'm sure you could appreciate it. But it smells... The goat smells like it tastes. Yeah. And it's unmistakable. You go to the barns. Um, by the pond. And you come home and people know you've been in a goat barn. <laughs> yeah. Even if you go on for 20 minutes. Yeah. You smell like goat. Just just kind of sticks to you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you got to shower after that one. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, your fingers, fingers got seasoned there. Too. Yeah, I was just going to say, I got uh, venison juice uh, and wadobo and on my lick, gloves. Lick your fingers. Yeah. Yo. So that. You want to put that on there now? Yeah. Is, where's the fry pan? We'll get some butter warmed up in that fry pan and <coughs> start, start some cooking. All right. Got some butter warmed up in the pan. The wadobo spice is on. These little medallions. And. Good to go.
coin. Yeah. Okay, we got two bowls, some utensils. I'll eat just off the frying pan. Okay. So you can grab what you want. Well, I guess we could put half the meat in here and half the rice in here. Yep. We we'll just have to put some into the bowl in the meantime. Now, some of this rice is crispy burnt. We might have, uh, we, <laughs> I might have um, ruined All of the it? rice. Well, there's a corner here that's particularly bad and partic particularly charred but I wonder if that burnt flavor has gone through the whole batch probably can it be fixed I don't know more maple syrup because the juice looks like it's carrying that burniness that's too bad Whew. yeah it smells like pretty burnt, burnt eh? coffee yeah <laughs> No, like some of the grains are just black, <laughs> black burned grains of rice. <clears throat> That's how you know Jeremy's whole wild year was a fraud, because you can't even cook wild rice. Yeah, huh? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Clear, you haven't been eating it all year. <laughs> Not usually on a campfire. Though. No, it's different cooking on a campfire because you you got to do probably four times as much water because it. Yeah, evaporates. Out. Well, we can make a bushcraft shelter now, but apparently we can no longer bushcraft cook anymore. So, my opinion on this rice? <laughs> <laughs> really? Is bushcraft fail. <laughs> Not that cooking rice is a bushcraft skill, but... Uh, that, that batch of rice is a fail. It tastes burnt all the way through. Hopefully our uh, <laughs> venison, which we were minding a little more closely, is uh, a little better. Here you go. <laughs> really? You can't even eat that? Hey? Can't even eat that for real? The rice? Yeah. Try a spoonful. Wow. It just tastes like, everywhere in it, I think just tastes like burnt. It smells bad. Yeah. It tastes just like it smells. Like goat. Nice bad. Yeah. Yeah. The one lying. Yeah. Not edible. Mm -mm. Just thankfully the venison's good. Mm. Let's check that out. Well, we're gonna have a bite to eat here. And Jeremy's gonna tell everybody what we plan on doing next. Once he's finished disposing of the evidence of his failures. What rice? We just came out here to eat some venison. The venison's good. Yeah. Tastes like wadobo and deer meat and wood smoke. Goodness. So, add-ons to the bushcraft shelter. What do we have left? I got a simple one, so I'm gonna, while you think, I'll throw this out there, mm -hmm. meat, po meat pole. Oh yeah, yeah yeah. That's an easy one, just pretty straightforward, but to be ready when we have game mm -hmm. is pretty key. Like mm -hmm. you don't want to have to remember to bring a saw if you have an animal ready to yeah. go. So we'll probably hang a meat pole here somewhere. Yeah. Because there's deer running around on the property. Mm -hmm. So maybe we can get that food plot set up in the field. You guys have seen the field. It looks a lot more splendid in the summer. Yeah. Maybe we can get a, a food pot put in and set this up as a deer camp. Do some deer hunting. Yeah. Probably shoot a duck or two down in the swamp. Yep. Um, can I convince you to um, flood it? No. We can't dam it up? 
get the water out 10 feet? No. Ah, oh, that'd be so much fun. There's lots of lakes nearby. We can just go to them. Yeah, but it's <laughs> having it in your backyard. They have a big duck pond back there and you can put some duck habitat. That's the next swamp up. Yeah. That's bigger. Well, maybe it's ducky. Maybe we need to make a trip up there and <clears throat> but put a duck Hello. blind in. I already put a canoe up there. Yeah. yeah. Might be something to do. I think I'd like to put a kind of a reflector wall for the fire. Yep. Slash windbreak. And uh, maybe a couple of benches near the fire. Benches would be good. Yep. Or individual seats or whatever. Burn out some of this brush, but I don't want to clear it up too much because I like how there's trees. Yeah. We can make some trails down to the creek. Um, mm -hmm. over here and I know there's lots of game running the creek edge mm -hmm. so it might be something to open that up a little bit more when I was young and just learning to deer hunt so the house is roughly that way and I would come up through the bush all the way up this fence line property line to this swamp and this is where I would always get busted by deer I'd always flush them before I'd see them they'd always whistle at me and I'd be like where are they this was like a hot spot back then. Um, but that might have been because my dad was logging here a fair bit and there was lots of good good food. Yeah, you'll have to do some more logging back here. Yeah. Because the, the habitat here is now, it's, it's secondary growth probably at this point. It's big, overgrown. Mm -hmm. And so there's not a lot of game here because it's all so tall right now. So maybe something to get into that a little bit. Cut some more wood out of here for burning. Open it up again. Yeah. Our experiment with the hair worked pretty good. Just cutting the maple yeah. or the birch tips and putting them on the ground drew them in. Yeah. So if we can get some more new growth of birch or even just cut some birch down, you get a yep. lot more hair around here. You like and that? Probably if, grouse too. If you cut cedar trees too. Yeah. <clears throat> well, for the deer, especially on the shoulder seasons, <coughs> they'll, eat it, they'll eat the cedar. But. Mm -hmm. You guys probably have some other ideas on what we should build out here. So what do you want to see next? Yep. I still think Courtney needs to come out here and do an overnight at least. But uh, you guys let me know if you want to see some other projects out here. Because uh, I think now that we have it established, yep. we know we can stay overnight. We know we can stay dry. We've got pretty much all the creature comforts and amenities that <laughs> we need to just yeah. Kind of take it easy mm -hmm. and then add a new project every time. So you guys let me know what you want to see next. I'll uh, catch you guys in the next one. Yeah. Go check out Jeremy, One Wildcrafter. There'll be a link down below if you guys want to check his channel out. Maybe you'll give him some subscribe. Maybe you'll subscribe to him, however you say that. So, see you guys later. Yeah. Thanks for following along, everybody. And I just feel like I need to do something silly here. Take a selfie of us with our two cameras staring us down in the background. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Funny stuff. Alright, catch you on the next one. <laughs>